begin. Hello, everyone. I would like to wish all of my fellow moms a happy Mother's Day weekend. Today's message is entitled, To the Forgotten and Forsaken. Let's bow our heads in prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Every year around Mother's Day weekend, all over the world, we celebrate and pay tribute to our mothers. To be blessed with a godly, loving, praying, hardworking, and caring mother is not to be taken for granted in the world we live in. I thank the Lord every day for my own wonderful mother who is still in the land of the living. But I also realize that everyone is not always so fortunate. There are many people for whom Mother's Day does not bring feelings of love and warmth. There are those for whom Mother's Day is the most painful day ever, not because she passed away, not because she is ill, but because of abuse, abandonment, addiction, and neglect. For someone today, the word mother brings memories of pain, harsh treatment, and destructive criticism. They remember being given up by their mothers as children to relatives or to the foster care system and then never hearing from them again. They may remember seeing mom addicted to drugs and alcohol and having to raise themselves. They may remember um, being afraid of getting that phone call that mom died of a drug overdose. They may have experienced sexual abuse either by mom herself or by her husband or boyfriends. Yes, these are the children who are hurting on Mother's Day. They are the children who act out in violence and other destructive behaviors. They are the sons who don't know how to treat a woman right because they are angry with their mothers for abusing them as a child. They are the daughters who look for love in all the wrong places and think that all they have to offer is their body because their mother sadly led the way by precept and example. They are the adult children who may follow in the toxic footsteps of their mothers in negative behaviors. Or if they do far better in life, they may still struggle with emotional problems. They are the CEOs, the professionals, the skilled laborers, the church members who are still hurting because of their mothers. On the flip side, there are mothers who are hurting because of broken relationships with their children. Their children are drug addicted or sexually immoral. In spite of their best efforts to raise their children, they are heartbroken because of their children's poor life choices. They too are afraid of that phone call that their child has overdosed and couldn't be revived or that their child is HIV positive. They are raising grandchildren and having to make all manner of adjustments, parenting again in a 21st century world that is different from the one they grew up in. There are mothers who are painfully aware of how their past has negatively affected their children. Yes, they have repented and are now walking in the truth of God's word but their relationship with their children may still be broken. They may be wondering, why won't they forgive me? Why are they still angry with me for the past? Why won't they move on? Well, mom, we thank God that you have changed for the better, but the reality is that your past life has done major damage to your babies. They may have watched you smoke crack or shoot up in your veins. They may have watched you choose drugs, or bad relationships over them over and over again. They may have seen grandma or auntie look for you in the crack house. They remember the terrible things you said to them about never amounting to anything. Even if mothers don't physically abuse their children, they can verbally abuse them by tearing them down verbally instead of building them up or not believing them when they came to you about being sexually abused. It will take time for them to heal from the pain you unfortunately caused them. Your conversion will not instantly wipe it all away. The time it took to cause them pain may be equivalent to the time it takes to heal it. There are mothers who are mourning the loss of their children today to illness, gun violence, or tragic accidents. 
They will never get that Mother's Day visit, phone call, card, flowers, or FaceTime greeting again from their deceased children. For them, Mother's Day is a sad reminder of the child that no longer lives. There are women whose hearts are aching because they have infertility issues that hinder them from conception. They long to hear the patter of little feet in the house, to have a little one crawl into their laps and snuggle with them. They have gone through many infertility treatments and experienced multiple miscarriages. They wonder how other women who are probably not worthy to be a mother can easily conceive and give birth while they and their husbands have such a difficult time. For them, each Mother's Day is a painful reminder of having yet to be a mother. There are mothers like myself who have disabled or special needs children. Last month was Autism Awareness Month. Not only was I diagnosed as a child with autism at age three, which now looking back was probably Asperger's or highly functioning spectrum, but our son Mark was also diagnosed at the same age. He is on the classic spectrum of autism, which means he has speech and developmental delays. He turned 14 on April 28th. We love him very much. He's a smart and energetic teenager, and he is a blessing from the Lord, but it is also very challenging. We have to constantly watch him because he has elopement issues. We have to have him wear a harness with a strap attachment so that we can keep him safely with us when we are walking in the street in public with him. While most people are understanding about it, there are some who have the nerve to criticize us publicly for it. We've heard, why is he on a leash? And isn't he too old for that? We are then put in the position of having to explain ourselves and explain his disability. And while we know we are not alone and that there are other parents in similar circumstances, sometimes we feel alone. I can relate because I am the mother who had to sit in the parents' room at church with Mark before the pandemic because of sensory overload challenges. I thank God that our particular local church had a parents' room with a screen so that I could still watch the message and still tend to him. I am the mother who was nervous about traveling with our autistic son on his first plane trip ever in 2016 to visit my mom in Florida. I remember breathing a sigh of relief that he and I got through it well. I am the mother whose only other relief is her husband slash Mark's dad. And even then I am thankful because some mothers don't have anyone else at all to help them or may have challenges getting respite care and other services they need. There are those who are caring for elderly or ailing mothers. They are now in the position of parenting their mothers, as it were. They are the primary caregivers having to make crucial decisions regarding her care. And indeed, it is a privilege and honor to care for the mothers who have sacrificed so much for them. But it is also a very challenging situation for adult children to deal with their mother's declining health. It's not easy to watch mom not be able to recognize her children and grandchildren because of Alzheimer's or dementia, or having to repeat oneself because mom's memory is not what it used to be, or having to tell mom what she can or can't do because of wanting the best for her. No, mom, you can't eat that anymore. It doesn't agree with you, mom. That's too much salt. Mom, let's try to go for a walk today. Honoring our mothers while being firm and protecting her sometimes from herself is not an easy balancing act. These are among the forgotten and forsaken on Mother's Day. These are the cases that we don't hear about in Mother's Day tributes. These are the kind of mothers we don't talk about and the children we don't mention. Can we continue to overlook these issues during Mother's Day sermons or messages? No, indeed. There are too many hurting children and brokenhearted mothers who are either sitting in church or even watching online who probably think, maybe God doesn't care about my problems. Maybe God only cares about those with ideal mothers or mothers who don't have issues. But I have good news, brothers and sisters. I believe that the Lord has a word this day 
for the forgotten and forsaken among us. Let's read his word and see what he has to say. Turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. I'll be reading from the New King James Version unless otherwise stated. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear nor be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25 says, I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 15 says, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. For those who are survivors of abuse, our mothers may abuse, abandon, and neglect us, but God will not. He has not forgotten you. You are still here for a reason. God helped you survive all these things because he has a plan and purpose for your life. Your living is not in vain because of not having a good mother. God wants to heal and deliver you from the pain you have suffered within. God wants you to be healed so that you may use your calling in life to bring healing to others. He may be calling you to be the doctor that binds up the wounds of abused children, the social worker that fights for children to be rescued from a messed up home environment, the teacher that encourages and helps children with learning disabilities, the good village aunt or uncle who is safe to come to and confide in, the pastor who takes the lead in making the church a safe haven for children and young people who need spiritual nurturing. You may be called to be the lawyer who helps children and teens be placed in permanent and loving homes through adoption. But first, God wants to heal you, my dear brothers and sisters. He wants you to get the professional help through counseling so that you can start the healing process from the inside out. He wants you to get to the place of emotional and mental health so you can be a good parent to your children, a present and loving spouse to your husband or wife, single, secure, and satisfied, if that's the category you're in, and a productive member of your church and community. Psalm chapter 27, verse 10 says, when my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. When our mothers forsake us for fornication, drugs, and messed up priorities, the Lord will take us up in his arms of love. He is the only father that can give a mother's love and still be our heavenly father. He can fill the emotional void left by our mothers. Psalm 113 verse nine, reading from the King James Version says, he maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children, praise ye the Lord. For those women who suffer from infertility and or miscarriage, God has not forgotten you. The Lord may be leading you to adopt a child or to be a mentor of children and young people. Seek the Lord in prayer for yourself and ask him to show you how to fill the void left by infertility or miscarriage. Psalm chapter 68 verse six says, God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. Even though some of us may have come from dysfunctional families, the family is still God's idea. He can place us among people with healthy families so that we can heal from the hurt and pain of our family of origin. So please don't dwell in the dry land of bitterness, resentment, and isolation from others. Instead, ask the Lord to place you with those who can be like family to you. Matthew chapter 12, verses 48 to 50 says, but he answered and said to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. In the body of Christ, God will lead us to those who can fill the role of mothers in our lives. Church mothers and aunties are crucial in this situation. They can do so much in letting God use their gift of mothering 
to help others through life. As a church family, we need to ask God to show us today how to minister effectively to the forgotten and forsaken, not just on Mother's Day, but every day of the year. We can give mothers a much needed break by watching their children for a couple of hours. We can encourage mothers to get professional help for their emotional issues and or addictions. We can provide a safe place for mothers to confide their life challenges and speak encouragement and hope into their hearts. We can pray with mothers whose children have left the faith that the Lord will bring them back to him. If your own mother has passed away, there are many other mothers in the community you can adopt and love as your own. Reach out to them with phone calls, flowers, and visits on a regular basis. Help them with errands and household chores. Cut their grass and trim their hedges if you can. These mothers will appreciate your love and kindness to them. Give them the love, flowers, cards, and letters you would give to your own mother. It's one of the best ways to pay tribute to a good mother's memory. We can also ask caregivers in our church how we can help them in caring for their elderly or ailing mothers. For example, we can offer to sit with mom in church while their adult children are participating in the service or sit with mom at home while they run errands. We can also help mothers of special needs and disabled children to connect with respite care and other resources that can help them. Talk to these mothers and or their caregivers and find out what they need. I can assure you from personal experience that they will appreciate someone thinking of not only their child or mother, but of their well-being also. We can also reach out to the children, whether they are little ones, teenagers, or adults. We can be the listening ear they need and the comfort they are seeking. We can be there for their high school and college graduations. We can send them care packages while they are away at college. We can keep in touch with them on social media and encourage them to stay on the right path. We can invite them to our homes and provide the positive family example they may not be seeing in their own home. You can be that mentor that can encourage and guide them through their career choices. You can teach them etiquette, good grooming, life skills, etc. The time you invest will not be in vain. Even when they stray away from the Lord, the memory of your love and kindness will always remain. The Lord can use the seed you planted to bear fruit in their return to the Lord. Let me talk for a moment to the troubled mothers today. If you are seeing yourself and your issues in this sermon, please know that Jesus loves you. No matter what your past or present is, he can save you to the uttermost. You may think you are beyond hope and that you can never change from what you are, but you can do all things through Christ. I encourage you to give your life to him today. He can deliver you and guide you to the help you need to overcome anger problems, abusive behavior toward your children, drug and alcohol addiction, and every other sin in your life. You don't have to stay in the muck and mire of your past or the prison of your present. God can clean you up and make you over into a righteous woman of God. He can help you love your children, help you to restore the broken relationship that came from the wrong things you have done and bring healing and reconciliation with them. It will not make you weak in their eyes to tell them you are sorry. On the contrary, it may be just what they need in order to begin their healing process. It may not happen right away, and your adult children may choose not to forgive, but you can still pray for them and let them know that the door is open when they are ready to move in that direction. I pray that the Lord will use this message to encourage the forgotten and forsaken among us during this time of year. May the process of healing and deliverance start today for you. I leave with you the words of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Let's close with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for loving those who are forgotten and forsaken today. Thank you so much for not forgetting or forsaking us. Thank you for your promise to never leave us. 
we pray right now that you will help us as believers in Jesus Christ to minister more effectively all year long to mothers and their children. We pray, Lord, especially for mothers who are troubled and bound by addictions, who may have all kinds of emotional issues and are taking it out on their children through abuse or neglect. We ask you, oh Lord, that you will please bring deliverance, bring conviction, bring repentance in Jesus' name. Let them know that they don't have to stay in the shape that they're in, but that you, the potter, can put them back together again and make them righteous women of God and noble mothers of Zion. We pray, O oh Lord, for the adult children, teens, and even little ones who have been abused and neglected. We ask, O oh Lord, that you will rescue the children and teenagers and place them in loving families today if their own family cannot be fixed. O oh Lord, we ask that you also heal the adult children. Heal them emotionally in Jesus' name. Heal them spiritually. Let them know that you, the God of heaven, will take up where you have their mother left off. You said in your word that you will take them up when they feel forsaken. So we ask you to take them up in your arms of love. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you will restore them. Help them, Lord, to know that they don't have to stay stuck in misery, but that they can be delivered and set free this morning in Jesus' name. We also pray for mothers, who are caring for special needs and or disabled children. We ask you to give us wisdom, give us resources, give us respite care that we need. Connect us with the right people that can help us. Help us to balance protecting our children and at the same time helping them to be as independent as they possibly can. Help us to focus on what they can do instead of dwelling on what they can't do. Help us to remember that according to your word, you have promised them a future and a hope. We pray for women who are suffering from infertility and or miscarriage. We ask you, Lord, that you will please either heal their womb to be able to produce a child and carry it to term, or help them through the adoption process, or point them to where they can fill that void through mentoring and being there for other children and their families. We also pray, oh God, for those who are caring for elderly or ailing mothers, Please give them a strength, oh Lord, that they need. Give them the wisdom they need to make these crucial decisions on behalf of their mothers. Help them, oh Lord, to have the patience, the wisdom, and still the love for their moms. Lord, whatever we have failed to ask, we ask you to fail not to grant it unto us. We pray for anyone who hears this message to be healed to start the process of healing and deliverance and being set free in the mighty and wonderful, powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. Be blessed.